okay, we've done powers, we've done constants, we've done adding, subtracting, and we've done multiplying. Let's take a look at the quotient rule. So the derivative of a quotient of two functions is the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, all divided by the square of the denominator. We can see this here. If this is my original function and f prime of x and g prime of x both exist, then this is what my derivative of the same function is going to be. So let's take a look at the proof of this. If we said that capital F of x is equal to F of x over G of x, then we can just multiply that G of x out of here. And we can say that lowercase f of x is equal to capital F of x times G of x. We know from our product rules that that means that if I had these two multiplied together, where I have one and two, my two factors, then I'm going to take the first one times the derivative of the second combined with the derivative of the first times the second factor. Now, we already know what this is. It lists it right here. So we're going to replace that capital F of X with what it actually represents. So I'm going to say that F prime of X is equal to F of X over G of X. Times G prime of X plus capital F prime of X times G of X. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides of the equation by G of X. And that's going to give me g of x times f prime of x is equal to f of x times g prime of x plus capital F prime of x times g of x times g of x or times g of x squared. Now at this point, because all I'm really trying to do is solve for what capital F prime of X is, I'm just going to isolate it using the same process that we usually would. I'm going to move that F of X times G prime of X to the left hand side. So that is now going to become G of X times F prime of X minus f of x times g prime of x. And that's going to equal capital F prime of x times g of x squared. And to get that f capital F prime of x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by g prime of x squared, so I have f prime of x is equal to g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x all divided by g of x squared. When I put this in the Leibniz notation, I would say that d over dx 
of f of x is going to equal exactly what we wrote. g of x times f prime of x, which we're going to write as d over dx of f of x minus f of x times g prime of x, which once again, we're going to write as d over dx of g of x, all divided by g of x squared. Now, we know that this is from capital F of x is equal to f of x over g of x, where my numerator is high, my denominator is low, and to remember this, we can say that it's going to be low times the derivative of high less high and the derivative of low all over low squared. Or as Ms. Malmstrom said to me, low d high, less high d low, draw a line, and squared below. All right, let's try putting this into practice. So here, I have my high, I have my low, I have my derivative of high is going to give me 2x plus 2. And I have my derivative of low is going to give me 3x squared. And then I can put it into that form. f prime of x is going to equal low d high less high d low draw a line and squared below. Now, my next question is, can I factor this? Nope, can't factor it. So I'm going to expand and combine my terms. So I'm going to say that f prime of x is going to equal the x cubed plus 1 times 2x plus 2 is going to give me 2x4 plus 2x3 plus 2x plus 2 minus my x squared plus 2x minus 3 times 3x squared is going to give me 3x to the 4 plus 6x cubed minus 9x squared 
and it's still all over x cubed plus 1 squared. Don't forget to apply the negative to all these terms. So I'm going to have f prime of x is equal to 2x4 plus 2x3 plus 2x plus 2 minus 3x to the 4 minus 6x to the 3 and plus 9x squared. And it's still all over x cubed plus 1 squared. I'm going to combine my like terms. And I get f prime of x is going to equal negative x to the 4, negative 4x cubed, plus 9x squared, plus 2x, plus 2, all divided by x cubed plus 1 squared. And at this point, I'm going to double check. Can I factor that numerator? No. And I'm just going to leave that denominator fully factored as it is. And there's my derivative.